morning, guys. Welcome back to the playground. Glad you guys could stop by and hang out with me for a little bit. So today I've got uh, something special, uh, for me at least. Um, have any of you guys ever had one of those releases where, you know, something came out and you're like, ah, maybe, maybe, eh, and you kind of passed on buying it? Um, you know, whether it was a limited edition or something just standard, but, you know, uh, to me, or, you know, another company has released a new car, and you saw it, and you were like, I really kind of want that, but, you know, I want this other thing more. Or, you know, I really want that, but I just bought a car, so I really can't justify buying that one, too. Well, that's kind of the case I came across uh, last year. Uh, a buggy came out, and I really kind of, I really liked the look of it, and I really wanted it, but I just bought, I think, two different cars, uh, probably a week or two before this came out. So, poor planning, you know, I bought two kits that are relatively readily available all the time, and a new release came out, and I couldn't afford it at the time. So I was like, meh, no big deal. Those won't fly off the shelves. I'll be able to pick one up in a month or so. I was wrong, wrong, wrong. Well, thankfully, I was able to get my hands on one, and I didn't have to pay out the nose for it, so that was even better. Because those eBay scam prices now on Tamiya cars, especially for things you can't find in stock, are just ridiculous. But I'm not going to go down that road. So what did I get? We got the Fighter RX Memorial Buggy. And man, when this, that's, this showed up, I was so happy. Um, again, like I said, this is one that I wanted when it came out. Just didn't get a chance to get it, and now that I have it, I'm super, super excited to dig into this, get it put together, get out for a drive, and then add it to the collection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the parts laid out on the bench, um, and before I start building, you know, I'll just kind of sweep over all that so you guys can, you know, enjoy looking at that little bit of it. Once we get it built, uh, I will come back and we'll show it off. I'll give you my thoughts of how the build went. And then we'll take it outside for its uh, first spin. guys we're back and the chassis is 99% built um, I still have to put the rear wheels and tires on um, just funny enough the front tires are nice and clean out of the box and, you know the back tires are generally a little bit crunchier just because they have the mold release on there this guy however is like a ghost of a tire I have never seen a tire a new tire with this much mold release haze on it so, you know, this is the front. It has a little teeny tiny bit. This is the other back that has, you know, the normal amount. And this one, you know, is like a frost, is like a sugar-coated donut. <laughs> so I'll definitely have to wash these guys up uh, before we get those mounted to the wheels. So that's one reason why the wheels are on there. Uh, another reason I want to I want to talk to you guys real quick about some of the things uh, that I noticed when I'm building this kit. So if you don't get your hands on one of these, this also applies to the same chassis, um, rear end, all that stuff. So a couple of other things. First, I want to address the slop on the front end. So the wheel nuts will only thread on so far to the axle stub uh, on the fronts, and basically it stops going because it's, it's bottomed out. So on this side, and I'll try to get some up close, this side feels like it has like an eighth of an inch of play in it. This side, I used some of the small, tiny, five millimeter PTFE coated uh, washers, and I put one on the inside and one on the outside of the wheel bearing, and the only movement now is just a teeny tiny little bit of play, and I can hold this steady 
and you can see that wheel moving back and forth. So the front end, you know, has a little bit of slop just in the tires, which is easy to be easily fixed with just adding those little shims in there. And I'll put a link down in the description below. I found a really great deal on Amazon recently. Um, I used to buy them from Traxxas, and you get like a dozen for seven or eight bucks. Um, this, I got a package of a hundred for seven or eight bucks. So, you know, you can do all your cars and shim out your front wheels. Uh, it's something I've always done. Um, you know, you just don't want that excess amount of play in there because your tire is going to be constantly, you know, waggling back and forth. Um, the other thing, and I'm sure it's a known issue with these kits because I've seen some fixes on uh, these before, the front steering has a tremendous amount of slop. So with the servo in a park position, you can turn these wheels left and right this much after I've tightened up the suspension. Before, it was twice this much. Um, and you, you're going to get some slop on a bell crank type uh, steering anyway because you basically have one thing feeding another thing feeding the outside. So, you know, the more indirect stuff is, the more slop you can introduce. So the really only slop in there is this little bit of slop between the linkage here and this um, bell crank here. So you can see that there's just a little tiny bit. Mostly it's in the bell crank. Um, just, you know, all this can move a little bit before everything else gets back to a fixed position. Now, before I put the fix on this, like I said, it was, the, the front tire is just waggling all over the place. Now, the fix for this is you add some heat shrink tubing to the little Z-bent linkage that they provide. And what that does is you build up enough of that heat shrink tubing, it takes the gap out of that Z-bend. So in this little Z-bend, and I'll zoom in here, in this little Z-bend here, um, it has a lot of up and down play before you add that heat shrink tubing onto it. And now that we built that heat shrink tubing up, there is no more up and down play. So what was causing all that tremendous wheel movement is both on this lower section and the upper section, you know, from one lock to the other lock, basically both ends of that Z-bend thing would move like this because you're going from one position and then forcing it into the other. And like I said, tremendous amount of slop before and an acceptable normal amount afterwards. Um, you, obviously, you're never going to get it rigid, rigid unless you're doing like touring cars or something. For a buggy, this is more unacceptable, but before it was like literally like this. It was ridiculous. Um, so all you do is just cut up small pieces of heat shrink tubing, slide them onto the rod, you know, shrink one piece and then let that cool off for a second, slide another piece on it. And I think I have three pieces at the top and two at the bottom layered up to take up the excess slack to keep that, um, that linkage from rocking back and forth. Um, the other tip, and I've shared it in other videos, when you're building this transmission, basically you have the two axle shafts going through and you have a E-clip on both ends, and that's all that's holding those axle shafts from going out. There's an E-clip and a washer, and that goes against the internal bearing in here. And then you have your external bearings out here. Well, when you're putting that axle shaft in, and you put this axle shaft in, you know, they just kind of slide inwards easily. So when you're trying to put the two case halves together, you know, one can slide and, you know, push up against something. And you're trying to put together something that has multiple moving parts. You know, you got your little diff in there that's kind of free floating, and there's a lot of moving parts. So on most of my vehicles, I'll take one of the body clips and put it through the keyhole or the pinhole for the drive hub. Well, these drive hubs don't have holes. These have the um, slots or notches cut into the end of the axle shaft and the little nut slides onto those splines and holds itself on. But there's a little recess right behind the splines and you can still put your body clip on there, pull the axle all the way out, slide the clip in behind that little bit of um, uh, splines and that'll hold your shafts in. You can shake those gear gearboxes all around and they won't fall out. And it's just an easy way to keep those axle shafts from, you know, flailing around and fighting you while you're trying to put something together. Um, not a huge deal, but just a helpful little tip that may help you guys out. So I still have to get the decals on the body. Um, the shell itself looks perfect. Uh, there's no stress marks. There's no weird places on the shell. So I'm not even going to paint this one. I'm just going to leave this one the shiny 
black, uh, black plastic. Um, I, I, I really just don't want to, honestly. I could paint it. It may come out a touch a bit shinier, but I think it looks great as is. And once you put the stickers on there, mostly all you're seeing is those shiny stickers anyway. Um, Got to get the driver guy sanded up and painted. Um, get the radiator painted and put in. And then I gotta go clean my um, frosted donuts here off so I can mount them onto the wheels, get those glued on. Uh, so I will get that done and I will be back in just a minute. All right, guys, so we've got the car completely built, um, got all the decals on, everything is ready to go. So there's just a couple things I wanna cover real quick. One, these decals look phenomenal. Two, they are a pain in the butt to cut out. Um, be prepared to almost go blind. Um, no matter how you go about trying to cut them out, whether it's scissors or a hobby knife or whatever, um, there is such a fine line between cutting into the decal and leaving a shiny chrome border around the decal. Obviously, you don't want the shiny chrome border because it's going to stick out like a sore thumb on the black body. Um, so I ended up having to do it underneath of a uh, little work light. And yeah, uh, whew, hard on the eyes. Let me just say that. So if you're a young guy, don't worry about it. If you're an old fart like me, um, yeah, you're going to have to take a break or two. But anyway, the, the buggy looks phenomenal. Um, you know, once you get the body on there, you realize kind of how stretched this rear end is. And, you know, isn't it a comparison? So say the Black Edition um, Grasshopper 2. Uh, Track-wise, it's, you know, half inch to an inch wider uh, width-wise. So this way. And, you know, maybe an inch and a half or so longer. Um, so overall, bigger. It's actually the same track width and uh, wheelbase as the DT-03, uh, the frog racing one up there. Um, so, you know, it should be a super stable little buggy. Um, so I do have to get out and drive it. Uh, waiting for it to warm up just a little bit. It's kind of cold out there. Um, but finally, the snow and the rain and the wind all seems to have gone away. So once it warms up, I will take this guy out this afternoon and drive him around a little bit. But as far as the build goes, the build went fine. Um, you know, I had no issues with the build. The only thing I would have liked to see differently is these front um, uh, steering arms. They're molded plastic, so you have a fixed uh, width here, which sitting there, it's fine. But when you squish up on the thing, man, the toe on those tires go like from straight to there. <laughs> so, you know, that was not the best design, and I will probably try to find some links that will work so I can make some adjustments. Um, you know, it, it still has a little tiny bit of toe in and at full release. So I'm actually gonna put, you know, at full droop, a little bit of toe out. That way when it's sitting there, it'll actually straighten. And then anytime it hits a bump or leans or whatever, you know, it will exaggerate it, but not over exaggerate it. Not too much you can do about it, just the steering geometry of the buggy. Um, once you get it put together, you realize kind of how stretched out this rear end is. And, you know, when you look at it in the in the pictures, you know, it looks stretched. But when you get it, it's like, wow, that's really stretched. But, you know, it still looks great. Um, my real only complaint with the buggy at, at all, you know, stickers are great. Body's great. Driver guy was fine. You know, everything went together fine. <sighs> to me, could you have given me a black plastic? servo saver or even a gray plastic servo saver you know you got this ginormous window and all you see when you look in there the first thing you see is that ginormous white uh, servo saver it's, it's a dumb complaint but you know the window opening you know just screams hey look at my servo saver which is not really what you want to you know focus on when you get the the um the car out but the driver guy came out really cool um, so basically I didn't have any flat red paint like it calls for. So I painted the, the, the helmet and the body in the same gloss paint. And then, you know, once the body was done, I just with a little bit of, uh, matte clear and, you know, it looks great now. So that saved me from buying a, a specific pot of matte red paint. Um, I like the little radiator in the back. That's pretty cool. This little guy back here. Um, you know, all in all, 
just a, a fun, fun build, and I'm really, really glad I was able to get one. Um, like I said before, I was really bummed that, you know, I missed out on it and didn't realize how limited edition this limited edition run was going to be, uh, at least here in the States. I know you can find them elsewhere still. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to shut up. We're going to end this off with uh, a little photo collage and then some run video. So we got it out for its first drive, uh, survived no issues at all. Um, you know, I wasn't beating on it too bad. Uh, and unfortunately, right now, I'm limited to where I can run it because if you saw in the video, I've still got big piles of branches all around the place. So the car ran great. Um, the motor we put in, I think, is just about right. Could have gone with the GT tunes and got it a little bit faster, but I think it would just overpower the tires. Um, it was already spinning a great deal with these tires on there. You know, they got really nice spikes on them, but a fairly small contact patch. Um, so I think putting anything any faster in there, it would have just been spin a palooza and all I'd have been doing was chewing the knobs off the tires. Um, the steering felt fine. I think with the steering upgrades we did, uh, really helped out the feel of the front end. Um, I still don't like the way it hurt uh, every time it goes down, you know. That just is, you know, it's just goofy looking, but not a whole lot we can actually do about that. I could put another spring spacer in there and stiffen up the front end. I uh, really didn't have a problem with it, you know, bottoming out. Um, I did notice going over a little hill, um, it wanted to buck really bad, and it could have just been the shape of the hill, but I'm thinking that maybe the rear springs are a little too stiff, um, that it's, you know, causing it to kick up a little hard. So I may pull one of the spacers out of there and soften up that rear end, see how that feels. Uh, but overall, I'm happy. We, we didn't break anything. Nothing came back torn up. I was really worried about, you know, these metallic stickers are tend to tearing if you flip it over and it hits something sharp. But no tears, um, so I have to clean it all up, uh, get all the dust and debris and leaves and junk out of it. But I hope you guys enjoyed the build. I hope you guys enjoyed the brief little run. Um, if you guys can get your hands on one of these, uh, I would get it.
Um, if you can get it at a reasonable price, go ahead and get it. Um, I got super, super lucky on this, and shout out to who helped uh, help me get hooked up with this one. I appreciate it tremendously. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here. Everybody out there, you guys be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I will catch you on the next episode. See you guys.